This is KGW News at Sunrise. Topping headlines this morning, the best possible outcome in what could have been the worst case scenario. A student shows up to a local high school with a gun who's getting credit for stopping him. Good morning and thanks for starting your Saturday with us. I'm Brittany Falkers alongside Vanessa Paws. And yes, of course, we will get to the latest from Park Rose High School coming up in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about that forecast as we head into the weekend. We've had a lot of gray days lately. A lot of gray days. And of course, you know, we were so spoiled with those, you know, out very unnormal temperatures that we experience, but of course we're getting back into the norm of uh, this for this time of the year, which of course is the mid to upper 60s as we kind of zoom in on our satellite and radar composite for you. Uh, we do have some spotty showers in the Portland metro area and then especially north of I-5 uh, towards the Vancouver area. That's going to increase as we progress through the day, but the majority of our morning is going to be dry. So any outdoor plans you got to do uh, to avoid the rain, I would suggest doing them as soon as possible. Meanwhile, as we give you this nice shot over in Newport, of course, we can see a thick layer of low level clouds. There, current temperatures are rather mild right now, 52 degrees and a little warmer in the Portland metro area, uh, 52 degrees. And we expect to be warmer through the day. I should mention highs today or excuse me, other temperatures around the area, lower 50s for the majority of us, with the exception of boring at 48 degrees, lower 50s as well along the coastline. And your weekend forecast is as follows. We are going to warm up mid to upper 60s, increasing clouds showers towards the afternoon tomorrow. Very similar story mid 60s for you. I will let you know though when the rain. Yes, it'll go away soon this coming week. I'll get more into that in my full forecast. All right, thanks, Vanessa. Well, our top story this morning. This is the man Portland police say walked onto the campus of Park Rose High School with a gun yesterday. He is identified as 18 year old Angel Diaz. Now, no one was hurt in all of this, and the credit for that goes to the school's football coach, a name sports fans will probably recognize. KGW's Mike Benner shows us how it all unfolded. Would you please join me in giving a warm hand and a big thank you to Mr. King Lowe. At a district track meet Friday night, the crowd pauses to acknowledge Park Rose High School track and football coach Keenan Lowe who hours earlier subdued an armed student inside the Northeast Portland High School. I was amazed. Um, he did a really good job. I'm, I'm thankful that he was there to do something. Everyone is kind of just like, did this really just happen? Like, we're all kind of still just a little shocked. The shock set in just before noon. Police are called to Park Rose High. Reports of a man armed with a gun. That man was an 18-year-old student who were told walked into a classroom with a shotgun. All of a sudden, yo, yo. I just remember he had came in and he was standing right behind me and all of a sudden he was trying to cock his gun and then the security guard had, had tried to fight him. It's unclear if any shots were fired, but we do know that Keenan Lowe tackled the gunman and wrestled away the weapon. I saw like Lowe on the ground and then like my friend Jared who was next to me, he said, um, he said gun and like we all reacted and so. We, you know, we did like the school routine of their school shooting. We, we all got in the corner. He was holding his head on the ground and the gun in another hand. It was crazy seeing him, like, because, you know, he's a wide receiver for the Ducks. So I didn't know he could tackle like that, but, you know, it's kind of it's crazy. As you can imagine, people across the country, across the globe, in fact, are praising Lowe, a former Jesuit high school and Oregon Ducks football player. One person wrote on Twitter, thank God for you. Another, true hero, bless him. Someone else wrote, so proud of our duck. And check this one out. Great job today. Students went home to their parents today because of you. In the meantime, a reporter with the Oregonians snapped this photo of Lowe leaving the school around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Lowe told the reporter, quote, I'm just happy everyone was okay. I'm happy I was there for the kids and the community, end quote. Just an amazing human being there. Now, the superintendent sent parents a letter last night. He says classes will resume as usual Monday, and there will be counselors on hand for anyone who may want to talk about what happened, along with enhanced security to give everyone a sense of comfort. Now, when this all started, police, students, and parents were not sure if they had an active shooter situation on their hands. Recordings from police radio transmissions take us through how officers heard about the incident first reported as an an active shooter. We're getting an update now from a teacher online saying she saw a male walk into a classroom with a shotgun, said he was struggling with security officers and they were in uh, the fine arts building. There's a male here with a shotgun and I can smell 
what smells like a blast here at some point. This is a possibly going to be an active shooter now at Park Rose High School. Need more cars. The school was put into lockdown and students were told to shelter in their classrooms. As the CERT team and rifle operators arrived on scene, officers started getting first-hand accounts from teachers. We're being told that there is no one injured in the school and that this is the only shooter. We have the person who believes to be the shooter in custody here. We have the shotgun. A teacher had recovered it. We have an officer with that. Now, you heard one officer say it smelled as though a round had been fired, but at this point, police still have not confirmed if that happened. We do know that that suspect, now confirmed as Angel Diaz, is in custody. Police just released his name, and the Park Row superintendent has confirmed that he is a student. Now, once the lockdown was lifted, the school and police diverted all students and parents to nearby parking lots for them to be reunited. The process took a while, and understandably, there were a lot of emotions there. This is happening so often now, and now it's ho at home. It's in our home. They, he came inside of our home, and I'm scared. Kids were bused from the school to a designated spot. Then parents had to wait until their child's name was called. Before they knew no one was hurt, parents feared the worst. It's quite emotional. I mean, even though my son said he's safe, it's just, you know, it's just the horror that it just doesn't stop, you know, and it just hits close to home. You feel for every parent, no matter where they're at. And so just, you know, it just is very emotional. I just don't know. It just comes right up. You feel bad for everybody and, and scared because it's your, it's your child. An intense and emotional day. So many parents obviously shaken up, but relieved to have their kids home and safe. Now the Park Rose prom is scheduled for tonight and the principal tweeted that it is still on. She said lots of love for our Park Rose community. Prom is still on. Take care of each other and we'll continue to follow this story throughout the weekend. You'll find much more of our reporting on KGW.com. Well, the driver charged in a hit and run is now out of jail after posting bail. The Washington County man is accused of injuring a bicyclist and flipping him off as he left the scene. William Ofga, well, Offinga was arrested on charges of felony hit and run and reckless driving. Cyclist David Embry says he stopped, um, his, he stopped his bike on the side of Northwest Hillside Road when a man in a Mercedes convertible hit him. Another driver recorded offing a the same day driving in the wrong lane. And when the call for tips on the hit and run went out, they came in. Yeah, we got multiple tips from people who obviously were familiar with his vehicle and perhaps even his his uh, pattern of driving in that neighborhood. So we got tips from the public and we were able to follow up and actually identify the suspect in this case. Offinga has a long history of driving trouble, including speeding, DUII, and a ton of parking tickets going back to 1982. A look at what happened in Southern Oregon. That is a Roseburg public school bus making a U-turn on an on-ramp to I-5 yesterday. Yeah, the bus got a ways down the ramp before it stops, backs up, and turns around. Then it drives the wrong way. We still don't know if any students were on board, and the school district released a statement saying it's looking into the incident. A Washington high school has reopened after a measles outbreak forced the school to cancel classes on Thursday. However, students can only return if they can prove they got the MMR vaccine. There are now six confirmed measles cases in King County, and one of them is a staff member at Issaquah School. Last week, Governor Jay Inslee signed a law ending personal and philosophical exemptions to vaccines. That bill also requires school staff and even volunteers to prove they've been vaccinated.